It is the Welding Room, and joining me from Chicago, Illinois, Mr. David Kincaid. Dave, how are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, very busy, uh, busy life, I guess we could say, as uh, uh, we actually connected uh, first. The, the initial contact was um, regarding Amy Winehouse, and then from there it went to the Oslo tragedy. Yeah, don't uh, forget to mention where we connected, too. Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, the, yep. so, the social network. We're yeah. BFFs now, you and me. <laughs> we are, we are, and, and the whole world could see it. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, like two weeks ago I finally saw the social network and it gave me a whole new appreciation of the whole, uh, you know, social network <laughs> you know I, I couldn't i couldn't even stomach my, my way like through half of that film it was just too much for me yeah uh, yeah those two twins it made me want to blow my brains out the whole time so uh, they, uh, yeah i don't know not my kind of flick no but, uh, no no but i think we all know those two twins somewhere we all <laughs> <laughs> i have the scarves the matching scarves here at home so there you go there's a word for it i, I don't know what it is <laughs> but, we probably can't say it on the radio. Yeah, that, that's for sure. That's for sure. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, switching switching into uh, what we actually uh, did connect on was the uh, the Oslo uh, tragedy. Yeah, uh, it was sad. Uh, very sad. Very sad. And it, it seems like these kind of uh, things are popping up more and more frequently all over the world. You know, I mean, Oslo would be probably the last place on earth that you would think it would happen. I know. That's what I, that's what I've been saying. It's like I don't get it. The whole, you know, I moved there a couple of months ago um, to be with the band, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, some immigration problems happened for me to where you pretty much need to be like Donald Trump in order to live in Oslo, Norway, which is completely understandable. But <laughs> it was just a pain. I shipped my drums there, blah blah blah. I'm back. But my time that I was in Oslo, I learned the whole city. You know, I was walking like ten miles a day, and it's it's actually a really cool place to live. It's there's something about it that's just so. Wow, you know? Yeah. And I would have never have expected something like this. to. Ha it's like Norway's 9-11. Yeah. Okay. And it, when I first saw it on TV, it was strange because I recognized the, like, the area, and I looked, uh, on, uh, looked it up on Google Earth, and it was like five minutes walking from my apartment. You know? And I, I got in touch with some of my friends on Facebook, and there's this one girl who works in an office right down there. She's like a block away from it. She's like, yeah, I was sitting there. And all of a sudden, our windows blew out, mm. like, you know, in in Norway. Yeah. I well, just, I, I, the people there are some of the most interesting people I've ever met. And automatically, they started pointing fingers that it could be like Muslims or whatever, because they do have a pretty big immigration problem there. But okay. once uh, once it turned and, you know, it became, the, it found out that it was this radical Christian guy, it's like, Wow, you don't know who you're walking next to on the street. Absolutely, absolutely. And now, and now, like uh, you know, we have just mentioned, it's it's a global thing. You know, it used to be, uh, you know, just um, you know, if he's Arab, you know, this profiling, this whole profiling uh, segment where it's you know, uh, if they're of a certain color, if they're a certain religion, then you can profile, and you know, they're the bad guys. But now it's uh, it's everybody. everybody yeah, it just it doesn't matter. You know, what's next? Antarctica. <laughs> you know, that's, it, that's guar, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I, I just I, I feel for everybody there, yeah. and uh, it's um, it's unfortunate that that had to happen. I mean, there's some really, really. Uh, did you read the uh, manifesto by chance? I have not. No. Well, I was glazing at it yesterday. I downloaded it as a PDF. Okay. And it's crazy because I've always been into this like. The, the minds of what makes serial killers and, you know, mass murderers and psychopaths do what they do. It's fascinating stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's interesting. And most of these people, like, I'm sure people are listening to me right now thinking I'm, I'm a maniac, but a lot of these people are considered geniuses when they give them their tests and their, you know, the IQ and whatever. And I was looking at some of the, the lines that were used in this, and they kind of shut up. They kind of... Uh, <laughs> Totally just threw me off. It kind of <laughs> reminds me of. Uh, it reminded me of something that I had read before. So I googled some of these lines, and like 150,000 hits came back to Ted Kaczynski. Mm. A few hours later, I got back and I saw on CNN that they had 
like linked it up with Ted Kaczynski's manifesto. Here, this guy was stealing all these lines and quotes and everything from Ted Kaczynski. Wow. So, I really don't have that much respect for him because first when I read it, it was like, wow, you know, this guy's deep. Yeah. But uh, it's all plagiarized. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he plagiarized too. If you're going to do something like that, I mean, at least be completely original. Right. You know. Yeah. But. I'm not saying I agree with terrorism or anything, but, uh, you know, in order to hide something like that from your friends and family and live, like, so many different profiled lives, like, around different people, it's got to be something that's going to be unique, you know? And he right. wanted to make a statement. Well, he didn't really make one, as far right. as I'm concerned. No. He didn't and, even and kill the people he was after, you know? That plus you look at, uh, you know, even his father has come out and said, uh, you know, you should have killed yourself instead of so many people. Oh, yeah, exactly. When, when your own dad is saying that, you know there's something screwy. <laughs> yeah, but in, the, in like a nutshell, you know, it's just it's a scary world, man. I fly all the time the, back and forth between uh, Chicago and Amsterdam. I mean, I just flew back last Wednesday, and mm -hmm. it's, you know, I wonder. Like, I don't look at people with turbans on their heads anymore when I'm, when I'm getting on the airplane. You know, I've, I've flown so many thousands of times in my life, it's like, it's something that's become a part of my life, and, and I'm used to it. But now I look at the little old women and the, and the, the big, tall, strapping young lads on the plane. You know, it's like yeah. you, you don't know who to trust, and it's spooky. Absolutely. Now, how do you feel about the, uh, the pat-downs and all that stuff, getting the free groupings at airports and all Dude, that? Dude, I, I don't mind that at all. Right. right. Matter of fact, I was quite impressed because uh, when I went through security at Amsterdam last week, it looked like I was walking into the Pentagon. It was like each gate had one of those machines that does the little three-second spin around you. Yep. And uh, they, they were all polite, and they had, I mean, they had it down to, like, all the T's, and uh, the, the T's were crossed, and the I's were dotted, you know? Yeah. And there was nothing, I mean, I got through that quicker than I got through the old system. <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do, because the last thing I want to be is some casualty to some psychopath's, uh, hate for the world you know absolutely absolutely the selfish people out there that'll uh you know do it for uh, whatever it might be religion yeah. and, friend. And, it, and it's always the innocent people that get taken down with it too oh absolutely you get you know, you, i just you get one bad guy and the rest is uh are innocent yeah uh and then another uh, uh i guess an interesting or something that fires you up is the uh the claims that people are are kind of comparing this now to uh the uh the early 90s black metal scene which <laughs> It's completely irrelevant. I mean, I don't see any parallels aside from the fact that maybe there's a death involved. Well, it's uh, just stupidity. You know, it's stupidity and, and how do I even explain it? Like, black metal fans, bless their hearts, they are extremely devoted to everything they do. But it's almost a little bit too extreme. Yeah. And I do what I do because I love playing the music, and it means a lot to me being able to do it. You know, I like to do stuff right and do it well and just make people happy. But some of these people sort of, like I've, I saw in Amsterdam a few weeks ago, it was like 90 degrees out, and there's people walking with like leather and boots and the whole get-up going, you know? It's like, <laughs> how can you live that every day? Right. But the stuff that I've been reading online is, um, it, it's just strange because these people are going and comparing it to like Varg Vikernes and, oh, I bet Varg Vikernes is sitting there laughing right now and blah, 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 blah. It's like, if you knew anything about what Varg Vikernes is, you probably wouldn't be saying this. You yeah. know, and I'm, I don't want to get into my personal opinions on Varg because sure. Sure. I, I've heard a lot of the inner scoop from the people that were there mm -hmm. when he did what he did. And he doesn't impress me, you know, one bit. Right. But um, I think people need to do their homework before they open their mouth because it's, it makes them look stupid in the end. And... Uh, it's just, it's not fair to go and accuse things that, you know, I mean, how can you go and look at this and say it's black metal? The first thing I looked at this, or thought when I looked at this was, oh my God, it's Norway's 9-11. Yeah. You know, and those people don't deserve that. Right, so. right. And it's, uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned, you know, the, the opinions, the black metal opinions, uh, because talking to the guys who have been in that scene, uh, the, the Emperor guys and, and um, you know, even Mortis, you know, uh, they all kind of turn their back on it, you know. They want not. They don't want to discuss it. They don't want to, dis, you know. They don't want to have any part of it, you know. They've they've moved on, you know. That was, you know, un unfortunately for them, they were involved, yeah. And, uh, and they're all just, you know, they will not discuss it really. <laughs> Here's the thing about, the, and this is like as far into the lives of other black metal musicians that I will go. Yeah. I've been very fortunate, like 
I've grown up, I, I worshipped all different kinds of music, from classical to Nirvana, <laughs> and you could call me what you will, but I think Kurt Cobain was an artist. They changed the landscape of music. Exactly. And, I mean, you know, I hate Pearl Jam, but I love Nirvana. It, right. I hate genres. I hate genre, genre classification. It's stupid. It's like, Emperor is Emperor, Mayhem's Mayhem, uh, the Counting Crows are the Counting Crows. Right. And I've been pretty fortunate to meet a lot of, you know, my, my heroes of black metal. Yeah. And they are what they are, but it's almost, I'm, I'm not going to call it sugar-coated, but they, they know what their fans want to see. And there are very few of those people that actually live like you see on paper in their real lives, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to name any names, but I've right. seen some crazy people, and then I've seen some, holy cow, that guy's really cool, and he's <laughs> really scary on stage. Right, right. It, but um, it, it's, it's very impressive to me, you know, that a lot of these people are way more educated than you could ever imagine. And talking to them, it's just like, they're not Satanists, you know? Some of, them, some of them choose to go down that road with the theory of their music because it works for them, but they don't want to go and burn the churches down. Nobody... Nobody looks at that church burning thing and goes, wow, that's awesome. The only one that does that is Varg, and he's sitting somewhere on his farm right now playing with himself. You know? <laughs> right, right. And especially, you know, I mean, for, for, for the reasons that it's a historical site, and if you think it's cool to, you know, burn down or, you know. In, in well, any... Exactly. <laughs> I mean, uh, the people that I know, the, the normal people that I know, they have, they're very proud of their roots. They're very proud of their country. The only thing they're against is how, I guess, corrupt uh, the laws under God are. And, you know, I also happen to agree that religion shouldn't be something that's forced on your throat in school. Right. You know, you should be able to choose what you want to do just like you choose what you want to wear and eat and all that. But um, these people, they don't live that. They might, some of them might sing about, you know, burn the churches, kill the Christians, blah, 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 blah. But they are very, very humble and, and proud people. And it's it's not a gimmick, but it's more like, you know, what was back then isn't what we are necessarily now. We might have made mistakes when we were kids, but you know it worked, and we grew as people. Right. So, and it's uh, you know kind of bringing this whole thing together is uh, like you had mentioned. You know, the person on stage is very different from the person behind stage. You know, and I, yeah, I, I mean, in in no way are they fake. Right, I mean, right. Like the lead guy in Borknagar, uh, Einstein. Mm -hmm. Perfect example. He's one of the, the smartest down-to-earth people that I've ever met, but he's also very to himself, and he, he's not, like, obnoxious and loud like I am. He's very, <laughs> he's very protective of his music, and he wants the best for it. Right. And if you look at the life that he lives, like, with his family in Bergen, which is one of the most beautiful places on the planet I've ever been to, you know, huge mountains and fjords all over the place, and it's, like, it's epic, you know? And we drove there on Easter Sunday, um, from Oslo to Bergen. It's like an eight-hour drive. And the whole time, my pants were just getting tighter and tighter and tighter over the scenery. And, you know, it was just... I, I, what his music is, is what he was raised around and how he, how he lives his life. And he puts it all into it. And a lot of those bands there, it's like, you know, maybe 5 to 10% of them actually do that. Right. Right. So. The soundtrack of his life, yeah. Exactly, and that, that's exactly the perfect way to put it. I mean, I, I have nothing but respect for people that really pursue their art and take it to the, the next level when it's real, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's a funny thing because uh, from my experience, and I've been in the metal community or whatever you want to call it for, uh, you know, over 20 years now, uh, metalheads are probably the funniest people you'll, you'll, you'll ever meet. You know, yeah, oh, I mean, the, yeah. The, the sense of humor and you know the, it's it could have been you know who knows the geeks in high school or the nerds which you know I would be categorized under a nerd oh, me too. nerd slash athlete and uh, you know it's, just, it's these people that are just creative they were outcasts of some sort and they went to the outcast music and and uh, well of course yeah I mean you know it's metal is a great thing but like anything and it, this comes you know with what we just talked about with the whole religious thing and the bombings or whatever it's like. If you take everything to extreme, it's going to hurt you. Right. You know, and I've met a lot of metalheads that are great people and they're open mind, open minded to to new different styles of music and blah 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 blah. But then I've met a lot of people that, you know, if I wear white socks on stage, 
and they see me playing, they're going to point at my socks and go, he is not true. <laughs> you know, it's just like, come on, dude. You know, it's, it's yeah, we, we play music that's dark and everything, but I wake up and I smile. <laughs> right, right. You know, I smile and, and <laughs> do all the things that other people do. It's just you, you, extremism in anything is dangerous. Yeah. And to that degree, um, yeah. you um, you still have the the Pets Foundation. The you know, that was uh, <laughs> I set that up one night because I got sick of looking at all these animal abuse things and whatever online and uh, not seeing one for metal. And I, I tried with it really, really hard. Okay. But I've just I've been so busy these past couple of years that it's you know it's hard to keep up with. Plus, I had health problems and everything in the beginning of the year. I had to have my gallbladder taken out and. You know, thought I was going to die. <laughs> <That's tough. laughs> so I had to put some of the things on the back burner. Yeah. But, but I guess you are a, a huge uh, animal uh, fan, lover. Yep. Love animals, <laughs> hate people. There you go. Well, you know, you feed an animal and uh, that's your best friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's super. Now, uh, getting into the, the music aspect of things, um, Bork Degar is recording right now, done recording right now. What's what's the status on, on, the, on the band? Well, we... Um, I went in the studio about a month, month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I flew out to Norway and recorded drums, and that took like a week. We got like 12 or 13 songs, and um, yeah, I mean, drums are done. There's, there's another special thing that's involved with this, which I can't even give a hint away because I'm under contract, but okay. the world will know what that is in September. And I have a feeling, like we were talking about how metalheads with the socks and whatever, like if you do nothing, or if you do something that's like untrue mm -hmm. you're going to take a lot of slack well, we're either going to take a lot of slack or people are going to go holy cow <laughs> okay okay but um special indeed special yeah. indeed <laughs> it's, it's just a, a little tickle the old fancy there yeah but, um we did that right now guitars are being done um and then they're going to do vocals and all that and uh we're mixing and mastering with jens bogren in fascination street studio studios in uh outside stockholm Okay. And he did the new Devin Townsend um, deconstruction. He did some Opeth remasters. He did the new Amon of Marth, new Catatonia. The guy is a beast behind the buttons. Absolutely. So. Those are heavy hitters right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's not easy being in a studio with Devin. No. Well, <laughs> I love Devin. You know, I, right, I was, right. I'll admit, I was never really uh, it, it turned on by Devin Townsend music until the past couple of months. My, fr my best friend, Johnny and Michelle, are like diehard Devin fans, mm -hmm. and they told me what an idiot I am because I'm so open to all different kinds of music. But whatever, I gave it a chance, and I was just blown away. That guy is a, a genius. Yeah, and he yeah. probably hates me because I bug him on Facebook all the time saying that we need to start a <laughs> band together. So uh, he might do it. That that might be why he'd get mad because he feels like he has to. Yeah, well, he does have to start a band with me. <laughs> it, it would be supreme supremacy right there that yeah. would that would and that could be the uh the replacement for strapping since he said well, that's yeah. done so it's not going to happen but uh as far as Borkengar goes the album should be out probably like january february of next year okay and it's going to be cool because we have uh Ventresorg singing still right. and um ics vortex rejoined the band a few months ago it's official it's official, it's official. yeah he's actually been in the band now probably about a year <laughs> okay all right but um we're pretty good with hiding what's going to happen, you know? Yeah. We, we like to throw teasers out there to the fans and everything, but I'm very excited that he's back in. He actually wrote a song on this new album, too. Okay. And uh, we tracked that probably in about three hours when I was up there and just you know, sitting with him behind the desk saying, well, I think you should play this. And, okay, that take sounds great. Let's just keep it. And I would never be happy with my takes. Right. But he's just, the, the guy's such a character, you know? Yeah. So I think everybody's going to be pretty um, pretty blown away by this new album. You know, I got to do what I wanted to do on it, drumming-wise, which Universal, it was my intro album into uh, the, the lives of the Borknagar fans, so I wanted to sort of keep it on the same terms as the last few albums, but do a little bit of my own thing. Right. But this album, I pretty much sat down the first day and said, look, I studied it enough. I know what is tasteful and not tasteful, and uh, just let me let me do what I want to do. And if you don't like it, we'll delete it. And right. I think maybe one thing got deleted. 
Not bad. Uh, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> That'll work. And uh, Bork, I guess Bork and Nagari could also call uh, like one of these all star bands. You know, you look at uh, you know this compilation of, of musicians that come together. I mean. For a long time there, uh, Dimmu Burger was like that, whereas, you know, they just had this, you know, amalgamation of, of the best of the best. Yeah, you know, everybody has their own thing. It's like, <sighs> I, some people have been in and out of Barknagar like two or three times. Uh, <laughs> Dimmu's had more drummers than I've had hot meals. <laughs> yes, they have. All amazing drummers, but, right, uh, right. you know, it, it's, it's hard because I like seeing a band go with one drummer and evolve, yeah. you know, but um, it, it's just... It, 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 I guess Borknagar is an all-star kind of band. You know, I still consider myself the new guy, but uh, it's um, it's just it's so cool to be in that band. You know, because yeah. there's there's no BS. You know, yeah. I've been in a lot of bands, like uh, Florida death metal bands and death metal bands from New York. I was in Arsis for like a couple of months, and uh, all very very talented musicians. But for me, Borknagar has been the best learning experience. You know? Yeah. And it's a much different feel. I mean, aside from being in a band mm-hmm. that's, you know, based overseas, it's, uh, I think, musically, much different from, from uh, a lot of other things. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I'm not even, I'm not even fond of some of the songs. Like, Epic, <laughs> the Epic album, there's like one song I like, and I tell Einstein that all the time. It's like, I don't ever want to play any songs off the Epic album, because <laughs> it's, it's just that time period when he wrote that music, it sort of seems a little bit hocus pocus to me you know okay yeah but a lot of people love it and more power to them i mean it's just it's it's all about taste and that's the thing i like about borknagar it's got its ups it's got its downs but it's so it's so uh, there's a big question mark printed on its forehead you know like yeah. what were they thinking here and wow they managed to pull it off and i think i'm always going to be more of a fan than i am a member yeah you know because uh like I don't write any of the music. I just I, I I come up with the drum parts and I criticize everything and <laughs> you know that's about it. But and that's that's a nice way to be in, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's great because I really do nothing but play drums and and complain. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. And it's good drumming, by the way. I must must say, as, as a drummer myself, uh, I was listening with an intent ear, and uh, the the tracks that you sent me here are. are Quite fun, quite fun. We pull the next album. Yeah, even it, better, huh? It's harder playing this stuff than it is playing the, the 260 BPM stuff, as far as I'm concerned. Like, this this stuff, you got to play blast beats at, like, 120 BPMs. Mm. <laughs> you know, so you got to sit there and actually focus on what you're doing versus, <laughs> you know, burst a blood vessel. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's hard to play, but it's fun. There's a lot of room to just open up on it and do what you want. Okay. Sounds good. I'm going to play uh, one of the tracks uh, that you sent me there. I'm not sure which one I have here, so we'll just get it going, and then we'll uh, take it from there. All right. <laughs> David Kincaid from uh, Bork Nagar. Indeed. Sir, thank you very much for coming on. Hang tight. I'll, uh, I'll get to you in just a minute. But, All right, uh, sounds good. Thanks a lot for coming on. No problem. It's Bork Nagar on The Welding Room.